something and someone that's, that's a part of this house and that I've seen this young man come to us uh, grow I've seen him grow I've seen his growth I've seen his spiritual maturity and most of all I've seen his dedication and commitment to this ministry Amen. and it's a privilege as his pastor to present to not to some and to introduce to some others none other than None other than Minister Terrence Jones. Restoration Church showed up on her profile. She hadn't even looked, at, looked for it or anything. And God brought us here. I thank God for restoration. Yeah. 
I thank God that he can bring you back and restore you greater than what you were before. I thank God for Lady Carol and Pastor Jones. Because I lost both of my parents. But God provided me with some spiritual parents. And I thank you. They have loved on our family from day one. And when I say day one, when we walked through that door, Lady Carol gave my wife a word. And that word has come true. And I kind of give God praise for that. I want to give an honor to my lovely wife. Yeah. And my family. Some have traveled. Um, if my family can stand up so everybody can see my family, you guys please stand up. Thank you so much for my family. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. So we can turn into our Bible. To Proverbs 3. We're going to read 1 through 4. We can stand for the reading of the word. It reads My son, do not forget my teaching, but keep my commands in your heart, for thy will prolong your life many years and bring you peace and prosperity. Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and men. Most holy and all wise God, Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to once again, sit at your table, Lord. Lord, right now, I ask that you allow me to decrease so that you can increase yes, every Father, Lord. Speak through me on today, how Father, Lord, and penetrate hearts on today, Heavenly Father. Penetrate souls on today, Heavenly Father. Penetrate minds, Heavenly Father, and restore those that need to be restored. We thank you for your grace, and we thank you for your mercy, for you are awesome, and you are mighty, and we just got to give you praise on today. Hallelujah, and thank you, God, for what you are about to do in our lives on this day. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, Proverbs. Is written by several authors, um, but Solomon is responsible for chapters 1 through 29. Uh -huh. However, the entire book speaks on wisdom. In this particular passage, we find Solomon writing to his sons. He's teaching them what to do um, in life and what not to do. Um, so they will have, a, have favor and high regards with God and people. Uh -huh. yeah. As fathers, we should want our children to have favor and high regards with God and people. Yeah. Yeah. However, the only way for this to happen is for is that we teach them. Yeah. 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 You see, we can pass down many things to our sons and daughters. Uh -huh. Some pass down their given name, mm -hmm. others pass down wealth. And some pass down family heirlooms. Yeah. These are great. But one thing every father should pass down to his children is wisdom. Yeah. The fact of the matter is that names can be changed. Wealth can be lost. And family heirlooms can perish. But wisdom is everlasting. If I were to put a title on this sermon today, it would be The Heart of a Father. The heart of the father can have many attributes, such as having a forgiving heart, having an understanding heart. Um, but today I'm going to talk about three different attributes that a father's heart should bear. These three attributes that a father's heart should bear would be 
um, obedience, um, dedication, and love. I love your hearts. As fathers, we have taken the back seat and are not in our children's lives. It's stated that 24.7 million kids in the USA don't live with their biological fathers. 15 million U.S. children, or one in every three, live without fathers at all. We got to get back in the home. There are some fathers in the Bible that stood out to me when I was thinking about the different attributes. So I'll go down the list. The first, the first one was Abraham. Yes. He, I'm sorry. The first one was Abraham and his great obedience. Abraham, original name was Abram. God called Abram and told him to pack up his family and all the belongings and move from Haran and, I'm sorry, move from Haran in a place where he was comfortable and move to Canaan. Yes. A place where he had not been, nor had any familiar, was not familiar with. Sometimes God will ask you to change your surroundings as fathers. The question is, will you be obedient and follow God's request? Since Abram was obedient, God made a covenant with him. Changed his name from Abram to Abraham and changed his wife's name to Sarah. God told him that he would father a nation. Now that would kind of blow Abraham's mind because he was 99 years old and his wife could not bear children. God gave Abraham instructions to circumcise every male in his house, including himself. Sometimes God will ask you to do some uncomfortable things as fathers. The question is, will you be obedient to God's request? Once again, Abraham was obedient, and God blessed him with his son, Isaac. When you are obedient, God will bless you with favor. When you think, you would think that God was done asking Abraham to do these uncomfortable, um, unpredictable tasks. However, he was not. He told Abraham to sacrifice his son, whom he loved. Now, most people would have thrown him in the towel. Uh -huh. They would have said, God, that's too much. Yeah. You're going to ask me to do a lot. This is my son. Yes. And you want me to sacrifice him? Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. But Abraham did not say that. No. He was obedient and he took his son to the place where God wanted him to be sacrificed. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. As they, listen to this, as they were walking, to the place, uh -huh. Isaac spoke to his father, saying, Father, oh, we got fire. Uh -huh. <laughs> we got the wood. Yes, yes. But where is the sacrifice? This statement right here tells us that Abraham was teaching his son about God and worship. Once again, he was passing down wisdom to his son. All right, he had to be going through. He had to go through the steps and know that for me to prepare a sacrifice, I had to have a lamb. All right, so he knew that something was up. Because Abraham was obedient once again, God provided a ram in the bush. He's prepared his son. He's tied him up. He got him on the sticks, and he's about to go ahead and slit his throat. But, but God sends an angel and says, Abraham, stay your hand. Don't, don't hurt your child. All right? God is good. When you follow God, he will make a way. 
Some of us are trying to figure it out all, our, all by ourselves and not seeking God. Start being obedient to God and see the wonderful works God will bless you with. The second father I wanted to talk about is Joseph and his dedication. Joseph was to be married to Mary, but it was discovered that she was with child. He made a choice to divorce, to, to divorce, uh, divorce her quietly. Uh -huh. But an angel of God came to him and said, she had conceived a child through the Holy Spirit. Uh -huh. And because of this, he stayed with Mary. Uh -huh. Some of us as fathers, as soon as situations turn unfavorable, we want to run. We want to jump ship. Even though the Lord is telling you to stay there and hang in there, we have to have more dedication with our families. Yes. Joseph showed his dedication time and time again when King Herod sent out the order to kill all of the two-year-old boys in Bethlehem. Joseph ensured that his family was safe and out of harm's way. Yeah. Joseph taught his son the family trade of being a carpenter. Yeah. He taught him the, the religion of the, the Hebrew religion. Once again, here is a father passing down wisdom to his child. Yeah. The Bible tells us that when they um, the family was all traveling um, from the Passover, his uh, parents thought that he was traveling in the party with them. Uh -huh. know, big care of him, all right? Um, and they had traveled for a full day. Yeah. And then they recognized that Jesus was not with them. Yeah. Now, Joseph could have said, he's 12. Yeah, yeah. He knows he needs to keep up with us. Yeah. I'm not going back for him. Uh -huh. But Joseph had, ded had, had dedication and went looking for Jesus. Yeah. We have to be dedicated to our kids no matter the situation. Yeah. Baby's mama acting up. Oh well, I gotta take care of my kids. Her family really don't like me like that. Oh well, I have to take care of my kids. My job is offering overtime. Oh well, my child got a game tonight. I gotta be there for my kids. We have to be dedicated to our family. I wasn't gonna be long. So. The last father that I would like to talk about is the great I am. The Alpha and Omega and his love for us. God loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son to die for us. That's love. God created us and loves us unconditionally. Yes. Some of us may not have fathers like Abraham. Some of us may not have fathers like Joseph, but we have the heavenly father. Yes. I didn't have a father like Abraham, nor Joseph. So when my father died, it was hard. Yes. Because I would think, what could have been? Uh -huh. if he was in my life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As I spent time with my dad's side of the family, they would tell me how he would call certain people on certain days and talk to them about television shows. Mm -hmm. um, they talked about how he taught them how to cook and yeah. how he went fishing with them and, and things like that. Um, and I started to ask God, why me? Mm -hmm. wow. Why was I not good enough? All right now. Oh, he reminded me of Jeremiah 29 and 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. You see, sometimes God moves people out of your way so you can become closer to you. It's not to harm you, but it's to make you greater. God said, Terrence, I was with you when you were formed in your mother's womb. I was with you when you took, said your first words. I was with you when you, did, you took your first steps. I was there when you were on your first day of school. I was there when you learned how to ride a bike. I was there when you learned how to drive. I was there when you graduated high school. I was there when you got married. I was there when you 
a child was born. Hallelujah. I was there with you every step of the way, molding you and teaching you. Hallelujah. So that you can be the man that you are today. Some of us are holding on to broken relationships. It's time to let it go. It's time to break the chain of daddy issues. It's time to break the chain of mama issues. Daddy may not be there. Hallelujah. Mama name may not be there, but God is there and he'll always be there. I don't know about you, but I'm glad that I'm in the royal priesthood. I'm glad that I can call God my father. And even in a midnight hour, when I can't call on nobody else, I can call on God and he'll be right there. No matter what the situation, he'll be right there. to be devastating. Right now, I want you to lift your hands. I want you to lift your hands. It's time to release that. It's time to release that into the atmosphere and let it go. This week, they talked about leveling up. All right, you were, you were stuck on that level. Remember when you would be on the video game and you would just try and try to get over this certain board, but you just couldn't do it because you got caught up in the same thing every time. Well, today we're here to help you level up. All right. So what I want you to do is start to release those things in the atmosphere. Whatever is holding you back, we're releasing it today. Whatever's keeping you back, we're letting it go today. We're letting it go in the atmosphere. No longer will we be bound. No longer will we be stopped by 
our hurdles, no longer, no longer will I be inadequate because I know God is a mighty God. Hallelujah. And God, we want you to move in this place right now. Heavenly Father, we ask to change break right now, Heavenly Father. No longer will people suffer. No longer will people be, will be stuck in the same situation. Chains are breaking today. Hallelujah. We thank you for what you're going to do, Heavenly Father. We thank you for what you've already done. Lord, hallelujah. We're glad that you are a chain breaker. We're glad that you allow us to level up. Hallelujah. Right now in this atmosphere, I ask that you penetrate hearts, Heavenly Father, Lord. I ask that you penetrate minds, Heavenly Father. I ask that you penetrate souls right now, Heavenly Father. Have people come to you on this day, God. Have people come to you on this day, God. Have people come to you on this day, God, and call on your name so that they can be saved. We give you praise. We give you honor. You are so worthy. Hallelujah. Now shout out to God. Shout out to God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Glory. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said I wasn't going to be long. It wasn't needed to be long. But I pray that you got something to go home today with. I pray the chains have been broken today. I pray that we have new walks today. I pray that no longer will the daddy issues hold you back. I pray that you will have greater because he said we would have greater. He said that you will be the head and not the tail. Hallelujah. You need to remember that you serve the Alpha and the Omega. You need to remember that you serve the beginning and the end. You need to remember you serve the great I am. You need to remember that you serve I am that I am. You need to remember that you serve I am the most high. You need to remember that you are the royal priesthood. You need to remember that God is worthy and he loves you no matter what the situation. Come on, y'all. Let's give a praise. Let's give a praise. God. If you are here today under the sound of my voice, 
The Bible says, harden not your heart. I extend this invitation to you. That this is a church that will love you past your pain and past your hurt. We, uh, we will help you get back to the place where God has called you to. And so if you receive this word today, and God ministered this word for such a time as this, I'm going to yield the floor for you to come and be a part of this ministry. Amen. If you're here today, under the sound of my voice, if you if you know God, if you don't know God, or if you knew him, but yet still you lost that relationship, this is that time. So if you're here today, we open up the doors of the church. Come on, sing. If you would sing, sing. Come on. If you would sing. Come on. Who's here today? Come on.
was holding her, the Lord told me to have everyone that knows how to pray to stand in proxy with her. Because the enemy wants to take her young because of her biological mother's rejection. Now, I don't know if you've ever been rejected in this house, but when the enemy tries to get you in your mind at this age, that's because he has an assignment. But we find every demonic force today that wants to come against this baby.